Good day, Nixers, and welcome to episode 2 of this series on science, technology, and society. In the previous video, we have discussed how science and technology evolved from something out of nothing. In today's session, we will discuss how human beings' condition relates to science, technology, and society. To start our discussion of the human condition, we explore this Venn diagram. It is composed of four circles indicating what we are good at, what we love, what the world needs, and what we can be paid for. We also see here the intersection between what we are good at and what we love refers to our passion. What we love and what the world needs is our mission. What the world needs and what we can be paid for is our vocation. And what we can be paid for and what we are good at is our profession. Okay? When what we are good at, what we love, and what we are paid for intersect, we experience satisfaction, but also a feeling of uselessness for what we are doing is not what the world needs. When what we are good at, what we love, and what the world needs intersect, we experience delight and fullness, but no wealth. When what we love, what the world needs, and what we are paid for intersect, we experience excitement and complacency, but also a sense of uncertainty, for it is not what we are good at. When what the world needs, what we can be paid for, and what we are good at intersect, we experience comfort, but also a feeling of emptiness because it is not what we love. Only when these four intersect, what we are good at, what we can be paid for, what the world needs, and what we love, does we find our ikigai. Ikigai is the Japanese term which means our reason for being. Now we started with the discussion on ikigai since each human being has his or her own idea of what success is. For some, it is finding their profession. For others, their passion. Still for others, their mission. While for others, it is their vocation. Others will be the intersection of the three circles. And lastly for others, their ikigai. As we may have observed, finding one's ikigai may be associated with achieving the pinnacle of happiness, the summit or the peak of happiness for which Aristotle calls eudaimonia, being good-spirited or otherwise known as human flourishing. Now, how is this condition of human beings connected to science, technology, and society? Let's find out. Okay, so based from our previous discussions in chapter 1, we may recall that human beings, specifically scientists, are in search for what is true. And in their search, they are actually using science. Nicholas Copernicus may have asked himself, is the sun really at the center of the universe? Our very own Rina Reyes may have inquired, will Einstein's theory be correct? when applied in a cosmological scale? Ramon Cabanos Barba may have questioned, do mangoes have to be available only from March to June? These simple and yet intriguing questions may have popped from the minds of these scientists, prompting them to seek the truth and, as a consequence, find what is good. Thus the phrase, the good is inherently related to the truth. Good in this sense may it be for him or her as a self-centric motivation, for example, being known for that particular discovery, or for the society as a community-centric motivation, being able to help the society and add to the body of knowledge. In Aristotle's eyes, self-centered eudaimonia was the objective. 
as time passes by, particularly in today's setting, finding balance is key. Achieving human flourishing or eudaimonia or the summit of happiness in a global perspective while also being a man of the world. Now, let's talk about science, which is basically the stepping stone used by scientists in their endeavors to achieve eudaimonia. In the previous video, we discussed that science is a methodical way of gaining knowledge. Now, shown here is the scientific method. It involves the following series of steps from top to bottom. Okay? So, by following these steps, science, for the most part, has the reputation of being objective, okay? absolving it from any accusation of prejudice or bias. Now, the following procedure or steps introduces the students of science to empiricism and experimentation. Okay? Now, these are probably very alien words. So, let's, let's dig deeper. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng empiricism at experimentation? Especially, particularly on the view of science. So, empiricism is the view that all concepts originate in experience that all concepts are about or applicable to things that can be experienced, or that all rationally acceptable beliefs or propositions are justifiable or knowable only through experience. As such, empirical evidence is associated with the record of one's direct observations or experiences. Experimentation, on the other hand, is the best known way to test the veracity or truthfulness of scientific theories, eliminate alternative explanations, engineer novel solutions to practical problems, and provide clues to the cause or causes of an effect, otherwise known as causal inference. So when we say experimental, it refers to an idea which has not been tested and proven to work. It takes a significant amount of time to collect enough data to determine if a particular product being tested meets the desired standards. On the other hand, empirical refers to studies based solely on available data, evidence and performance of the product being studied to determine if it meets the expected standards. Enough on the subject of empiricism and experimentation. Now, there are two schools of thoughts which arose because of the thin line between what science is, what philosophy is, and what pseudoscience is. Pseudo meaning being false, pretended, or not real science. As we have discussed, science is directly related to knowledge, while philosophy is the love of wisdom. Now, the first school of thought considers a discipline is science if its results are measurable and experiments are repeatable. In a sense, there must be available data, and this may directly refer to a scientific law, since results are true every time. Now, this criterion that distinguishes philosophy and science is what is called the verification theory. Okay, and this has been supported by an elite group of scientists known as the Vienna Circle. In other words, for verification theory, it is a to see is to believe, to observe is to believe, to experience is to believe school of thought. Now, the downside to this theory is its ability to shut down several budding theories prematurely. For example, Einstein's theory of gravity. Einstein conceived the theory through his thought experiments, because probably the technology during that time and the lack of available data okay, may result to this theory being dismissed. Now, it would have been to the greatest regret if the theory was not adopted as scientific, since as we have discussed in chapter 1, there is significant evidence to show that the theory stands within a given margin of error. Now, to explain the school of thought that prevails nowadays, let's listen to this. In science, we want to test 
the theories uh, we know because even if they're great, just like Newton's theory was great, no, and Einstein's theory is, is great, we know that there can be another theory that will be discovered in the future that will supersede the current theory. That's how science progresses. Now, this second school of thought asserts that as long as an ideology is not proven to be false and can best explain a phenomenon over alternative theories, we should accept said ideology. In a sense, we could say that falsification theory stresses matira matibay na theory. Now, Karl Popper is the proponent of this view. Okay? So note that even though theoretically falsification method is more accepted nowadays, probably because of its degree of leniency to what is accepted as science or not, scientists are not convinced that it should be regarded as what makes a discipline scientific. This was actually raised since there are disciplines considered to be science which are not falsifiable. For example, Sigmund Freud's psychoanalysis. This method falsification method also presents certain dangers by interpreting an otherwise independent evidence in light of a scientist pet theory. Now this begs the question, if a discipline which pass through the filters of verification and falsification are still not 100% regarded as scientific, then what is? Okay? So due to the inconclusiveness of verification theory and falsification theory in identifying whether a discipline can be considered science or not, a new school of thought emerged on science, now not relying on results but on its social dimension. So a view in which science and technology is for society. In other words, a view in which the body of knowledge, science, and the tools, technology, that came forth or emerged as a result of those knowledge are used for the benefit of society. As a result, it presents an alternative notion of science that goes beyond what must be accepted or not accepted as knowledge, or which theory is better than the other. It projects science in a different light, as a manifestation of shared experience, forging solidarity, among communities. Now, having discussed what makes a discipline scientific through the rigors of verification, falsification, and in consideration of its social dimension, we now come to a point of considering science and results. The science results to something that the ordinaryong Juan feels, that even an ordinaryong Juan can appreciate. Okay, so let's have a scenario. Imagine an imaginary character. Let's call him Joe. Joe has 800 pesos. He invested this amount. And in two weeks, he was able to make this 800 pesos to a whopping 350 million pesos. Okay? So 800 pesos in two weeks naging 350 million pesos. Now Joe comes to you asking if you want to invest. Will you allow Joe to manage your money? So probably there is great possibility that you will, okay? You have seen his results from 800 naging 350 million, okay? Now this imagined scenario is actually true to life, okay? Nangyari ito, and it is not in pesos, it is in dollars. Andrew Carlson was able to pull this off as he claims to have time traveled from the year 2256. Now bearing this scenario in mind, people who do not understand science are won over when a particular discipline is able to produce results. I mean, who makes $350 million in two weeks from $800, right? Disciplines such as religion, luck, human randomness, superstitious beliefs also produce results that win its followers and supporters over. To conclude, science does not monopolize the claim for definite results. If science does not claim unanimity of being the source of truth, why are societies drawn or magnetized to it? Why do most of our learners take science degree courses? We hear Bachelor of Science 
in Marine Transportation, Bachelor of Science in Marine Engineering, and all other Bachelor of Sciences. Okay? So perhaps one might infer or predict that there are more demand for professionals in the science and technology field, making students and parents preconditioned that the field would later land them high-paying jobs and lucrative career after graduation. Here we take a look at a familiar slide on Chapter 1, Science as Education. Connecting the dots, a true eudaimon, or a person seeking the pinnacle of happiness, must excel in various dimensions. In other words, must be holistic. The problem is, as man seeks and finds this state of becoming a eudaimon, as human beings amass knowledge and were able to create technologies that would benefit society, somehow a looming threat or crisis is approaching, which shows itself in the guise of development. An example of this is during the year 2000, the new millennium, where leaders acted on good faith to promote growth for all. Well, the idea of growth for all is positive to the ears. Okay? It actually sounds good to the ears. It actually presents an illusion that clouds our vision since our world, the earth, particularly its resources, can only provide so much and cannot be expected to stretch out for everybody's consumption for a long period of time. In other words, growth for all, growth for all developing countries is unsustainable. Okay? It cannot be sustained. The rapid pace of technological growth allows no room for nature to recover. Okay? You may think about the trees that take years to grow and only takes a day or two to be cut. Okay? As such, this growth that we are talking about may actually be fatal, resulting in exploitation and irreversible damages to nature. To illustrate this scenario, let's watch this clip. The weather and the climate are making news in more than one reach. Severe flooding has killed at least 72 people. And Under siege in the grip of unmitigated catastrophes. The evidence is now clear. Industrial civilization has caused irreparable damage. Our political and corporate leaders have consistently ignored the overwhelming scientific evidence. Not only is it the 11th hour, it's 11.59. What we saw with Katrina is just prologue. Worse is yet to come. The UN estimates that by the middle of the century, there may be 150 million environmental refugees. There are too many of us using too many resources too fast. The problem is that every living system is in decline, and the rate of decline is accelerating. The tragedy is the potential extinction of humankind. We face a convergence of crises, all of which are concern for life. Will our pivotal generation create a sustainable world in time? People need to realize there are things they can do in their everyday lives. Everybody making a change adds up to something meaningful. Our project today is the welfare of all of life as a practical objective. With existing technologies, we could literally reduce the human footprint on planet Earth by 90%. We have to imagine what it would be like to redesign design itself. These are not technical issues nearly as much as they are leadership issues. There was a time when Republicans and Democrats joined to pass major environmental laws. 500 years out, people look back at this time that this was our finest hour. What a great time to be born. What a great time to be alive because this generation gets to completely change this world. So today we are seeing increased gross domestic product or GDP among countries, but does it translate to the betterment of the lives of its citizens? Was there social progress? 
Okay? This is why on the previous chapter, we actually stressed that we will arrive to a point in our discussion that we will begin to question whether science and technology is advantageous or disadvantageous to society moving forward. Okay? So in year 2016, another set of goals was made. Okay? Well, the MDGs or the Millennium Development Goals are produced by a group of experts, the new set of goals is a result of a consortium of 193 member states to the United Nations, civil society, and other stakeholders. While MDG is focused on developing countries, the new set of goals on the SDG are applicable to all countries. We now welcome the Sustainable Development Goals with their motto, Leave no one behind. And only time will tell whether these goals will have a better and felt effect by the society. In our case, the ordinary yung Juan that we are talking about a while ago. Okay, so as a summary, human flourishing is defined as being good-spirited in the classical Aristotelian notion. Human beings have their own biases as to what it means to flourish or succeed. Although in the advent of science and technology, majority associate human flourishing to technology and its results since it makes life faster, more comfortable, and convenient. Science and its results, on the other hand, are questioned in comparison to technology since there are other disciplines that could provide the same knowledge or explanation. Finally, economic perception of growth is flawed as it is heavily fueled by technology and should be impeded or stopped. There is a challenge to rethink our perception of a good life as we may have to let go of our own perceptions of what is good as it may turn out to be bad. And that ends this video and our next episode will be about technology as a way of revealing. Again, thank you for watching this episode. If you found this video helpful, please leave a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you are not yet subscribed and ring the notification bell so that you will be updated on our latest uploads. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.